I'm going to go into the setup of the full face mask. I'm going to do just a basic description of how you don your full face mask. That seems to be an issue that I see quite often from, well, everywhere. When you watch television, it gets to a point is I can't watch television anymore where our gears on it because I see so much top strap that just drives me crazy. A couple of years ago with Shark Week, and then I'm going to get into cleaning the masks and I'll talk about different and sanitizing, talk about different solutions here. But getting back to, and we'll start off with, uh, with proper donning of the mask, this being one of the major issues that we have with full face masks in general. Um, a couple of years ago, Rhonda Rousey was on Shark Week. She was one of the hosts on Shark Week. And um, she, uh, hey, Tom, get a hold of me later on. We'll talk about what your issue was. Uh, but there's no way that Rhonda Rousey could have liked our full face mask. So she was wearing a Guardian. And when I saw what she, the way she had her mask set up, it, it had, she had to hate that mask. It, there's no way it was comfortable. She had the top strap literally pulled as far as you can get it. And, and the head harness was on top of her head. So this being, like I said, one of the significant problems that we have when I watch people adjust the mask, uh, and again, you see it on television, the proper way to don the mask, and when number one, read the instructions. And uh, hey, Chip, I want to talk to you about Charlottesville. Um, but we uh, uh, proper donning of the mask, read the instructions. You got to read the manual. And I go into it when I wrote the manual on the on adjusting the mask. I talk about proper donning of the full face mask. So when you get your mask and you get it all set up, you know, you, whether you have comms or not, uh, you know, that's a subject for a different conversation. Um, you want to when you get ready, you, you know, set it up. You, you don't have to do any treating of the lens for the polycarbonate lens. You, you, you peel the plastic liner out. It's kind of amazing that they come with a protective liner on your new masks. And it's amazing how often I see people that um, will uh, will leave that liner in there. And it's, it gives a little distorted view. But you'll see a little tab on the inside here. You need to reach on the inside and pull that plastic liner out. Not not that big of a deal, but you just, don't, you know, you want to feel that out. That's for storage only or shipping and handling, um, you know, when the mask is new. There's only one on the outside, but it's got print all over it. You'll absolutely notice that it's on there. So peel both of those out. But there's no prep that you need to do for the mask. Um, but then read the instructions. If you have a class, uh, a local dive shop that teaches full face masks, take their full face mask class. Um, if you don't have that luxury of having a nearby dive shop um, where they teach full face mask training. Um, it's not absolutely a necessity. I, it's recommended. Uh, it's not a necessity, though. There's no requirement to have a full face mask certification to be able to buy one or something like that. Um, but you do want to take some time and spend time in the pool and dive it. Now, one of the things that when you're going through, again, reading the manual, as you should be, I uh, talk about uh, donning the mask. I'm kind of being repetitious here. But you're going to take your mask. You're going to extend, fully extend the straps. So always fully extend the straps. You, you never pre-adjust the mask straps and expect to stretch it over your face. So you extend the mask straps fully. Then you're going to take the mask. And you're going to drop it over your head. Um, and then you're going to wiggle the chin in the chin pocket. So the, the critical fit of the mask is you wiggle the chin into the chin pocket. And then when you adjust the straps, you're going to hold it into your face and you're going to adjust the jaw straps first, temple straps second, and lightly only nece what's necessary to adjust that top strap. I see people all the time put the mask on, they reach for the top strap first and then they adjust the other ones. And they rip on that top strap. As I mentioned earlier, they pull on that top strap. And when that top strap is, is fully extended like this, the head harness is now on top of your head and you're trying to fit the mask back on your face. It doesn't work that way. You can't strap the mask on your face holding it like this. You have to have the head harness as far down in the back of your head as you can get it so that when you adjust those straps, it pulls the mask back on your face. So what happens with the head harness up here, the center of the head harness back on the top of your cranium, it's pulling up against your jaw. So what you get then is uh, jaw fatigue. If, if somebody says, yeah, I've died a full face mask, but it hurt my jaw. Uh, or you fatigue my jaw afterwards, you get, um, you, you know, you have uh, uh, a jaw fatigue or, you know, muscle soreness afterwards. And it'll hurt for three days like any typical muscle soreness will. And um, that usually is an indicator of over in the top strap. The other thing is that people complain about is the sensation 
that the mask is lifting off your face, that it's not, it's just not set on your face right, that it feels like it's coming off. Well, again, have the chin in the chin pocket, that head harness down as far as you can, pulls back. That eliminates that. Um, the, the, there's, like with the inner spiro mask, they have a bronze weight set. Uh, we don't have a weight set for hours. Properly adjusted, the sensation that you need, um, that you need the, uh, uh, Josh just sent me a thing about donning my, uh, of your position, your microphone. I, I talked about that last week and I might touch that on, on that here a little bit, but again, the weight set, the, um, uh, the, 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 that's that fights that, that sensation of buoyancy because there is some displacement with the mask. And I've found the proper donning of the full face mask and proper application of the top strap, not too much of it, uh, kind of eliminates that. Now, if you get divers, any divers that are doing special uh, specialized diving, like long long periods, um, six uh, seven hours a day, whatever the case may be, they might start to suffer a little bit from the buoyancy of the mask, and weights might be helpful in that. But for your average dive, and I've done you know five dives a day on liveaboards underwater for five hours or plus hours a day, I never really see that. Um, so it's not that uh, it, the the buoyancy of the mask really isn't that much of an issue. So again, proper donning is fully uh, extend the, the mask straps. You're going to take the mask, seat it onto your face, get the chin in the chin pocket, give it a little wiggle, jaw straps first, temple strap second, a little bit on that top strap. Now, some, often you do need some top strap because if the mask is burping here, raise it up a little bit. If the mask is dropping down a little bit where you're not getting a good seat on the chin, you may need to take some top strap up there. But in reality, if you've got more, and different size faces who are going to need more strap than others. Uh, if you're little, you may need more top strap. But for, you know, I have what I refer to as an off-the-shelf face, an off-the-shelf head. And, and that for me, if I have more top strap than that extended, that's really, that's, uh, you know, I, that's too much. Any more than that is probably too much for me. But again, um, you know, my size seven and a quarter head or whatever it is, um, it uh, it fits me pretty well um, with only that much top strap. So again, the reason why you know symptoms like symptoms of not having properly adjusted mask are going to be jaw fatigue. The mask feel like it, feeling like it's or the sensation of the mask coming off and buoyancy. Um, it just feels that way a little bit. Uh, fitting the mask and one of the things that this comes up quite often is fitting the mask over a hood. Um, a neoprene hood is going to be uh, any. It's just like your regular half mask. If you have something stuck in the hood or in in the seal of your mask, it's going to leak. Hair, same way. You have to get that clear that that's out. I see people wearing cold water hoods and seal over top of their nylon two hood, and it and it 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 burps. It leaks. Uh, you have you look like an aquarium stone. So one of the issues with that, or what one of the results are. That, you know, since it's leaks, what's the solution? Well, you pull the straps harder. Uh, well, it's still leaking. So what do you do? You pull the mask even harder. Um, and and eventually what will happen is you end up tearing out the, the tabs here. You end up ripping the skirt itself. Uh, you know, that's 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 damage of the mask. When you're cranking it down, trying to seal over top of a, an obstruction in the seal, uh, um, then you're going to you're going to be over tightening it to a point as to where, yeah, you're going to damage the mask. So be careful about that. What I recommend is that you trim the hood, uh, a neoprene hood, trim it back. I've got instructions for that. If you're interested in it, let me know. I've, I do have a, a uh, I do have written instructions for trimming of hoods. Um, I don't want to get into it too much here because it'll take up a little bit too much time. I wanted to try to keep this down to 15 or to a, a half an hour. It's going to run over that. Um, but uh, you want to trim the hood back. Be careful. Don't just put your hood on, put the mask on, draw around it and cut uh, because you'll end up with a big gap up here. The instructions are you, where you, you take it here, you cut it down from the line and around here you can trim it okay. Once you can roll that. Now, latex hoods for public safety divers, a different story. Uh, that hood is thin. Um, one of the problems with a thicker hood is it also stands a mask off your face by, you know, whatever the thickness of the hood is. That results in added volume to the mask. And when you have that added volume to the mask, you are going to get more buoyancy, along with the leaking of the of the mask where, you, again, you don't you have something stuck in your seal and it's going to leak. It also has a tendency to inflate your hood. 
Uh, you know, they come up with solutions of venting uh, hoods like that, and latex hood venting as well. If you do use the vents, uh, like Viking has one. I don't know if uh, if uh, Aqualung that ha has one now or not. But I saw people they would put them dead center up there with those little valves in the or in the latex hoods, and then they put their strap over top of it, and it feels like a stone stuck in your shoe. So be careful with that. You want to offset it so so it doesn't interfere with the straps if you're going to use one of those. So uh, latex hoods are fine. You can seal over top of them. Now there are smooth skins, and it's a fa it's a, a seesaw has a, a hood that has skin on. Uh, I, I know it's skin out. I'm not sure about the skin in. I've ha I've had I had years ago, uh, 25 years ago, I had uh, uh, Andy from White House. Um, uh, and, uh, it was uh, uh, he was a Typhoon a distributor. He had. Um, um, made me a specialized hood that has skin out. I still found it stood it off here. The other other thing about standing the mask off while sealing over top of a thicker neoprene hood is that your equalizing assembly that you have lined up with your nostrils is now out a little bit, so it stands it off. So that that kind of throw an equalizing assembly off uh, a little bit as well. So uh, when you've got that equalizing assembly out this, it's not it's not engaging nostrils as well. So you have to really kind of struggle with that. So again, trimming the neoprene hood is the best way to do it. If you're diving in contaminants, neoprene is not the best anyway, uh, a subject that we talked about a little bit um, previously. Um, so again, that's proper donning of your mask. Um, if anybody has any questions about that, I'll certainly post them here. I will try to get into, uh, into that. Uh, comms are not interchangeable with the Guardian to the inner spear of their chip. Um, that we can talk about that. Shoot me a note and I'll, I'll get into that in more detail. Um, I see Gary had his experience with the Seasoft, and he said he can never, never get it to uh, get used to it. Uh, again, it's just kind of problematic because, again, you're changing the whole adjustment of the mask. So let's talk about cleaning masks. Uh, this is something that's really come up late. It's, I mean, more. I mean, it's something we talk about a lot in the past. Um, and then here, obviously, with, uh, with COVID, um, uh, the coronavirus, we've this come into play where we certainly don't want to share masks or you know share our share viruses at, le at least. If you if you have uh, your own equipment, fine, that's the greatest thing. How do you uh, that's so, you're socially isolating at that point because you're not sharing uh, any any viruses. Um, if you're with a dive team or an aquarium where you have to share masks, let me talk first. I'm going to backtrack a little. Bit. Let me talk first about basic cleaning. The, at the end of any dive, if it's your basic gear, you're diving in a routine in salt water, you, uh, you know, a port dive in water that's not, you have no concerns of contamination or anything. You know, you know there's somebody here from Cozumel, if you're, if you're, or if you're diving off Catalina, someplace like that, um, you're just, it's a routine dive, you're not worried about contaminants. Just a freshwater rinse and dry will usually suffice for most of your cleaning. You shake the regulator out, and what I talk about, and I has online for this um, is shake the regulator out. Now, if you've got a, a, a stealth regulator, be careful with it. it has an issue. Uh, there's an issue with shaking it too hard. You can jump the spring. But with this, you shake the water out of the regulator out after you give it a uh, um, a good a good freshwater rinse, and then you put the mask up. I hang it hang it upside down by the chin pocket and let it dry. Go in and sop that water up that rain that uh, preci precipitates down to the bottom and it'll dry even faster. Um, I got things popping up in my way there. I have to address those later. Uh, then they have, you do have a mask that gets mucky, uh, whether you're diving in just questionable water. Soap and water will do most of what you want to do. And I'm talking about Dawn dishwashing liquid. Uh, you, they have an antibacterial uh, formula. That'll do the vast majority of your cleaning as well. Um, but if you want to, you know, a good soapy, a soapy water dunk, and I mentioned this before in the previous one, where we talk about wiping the masks out, spraying the masks, and and uh, and dunking the masks. But a good dunk and a swish in soapy water solution and a fresh bottle by a fresh water rinse, sort of a level two clean. A level one would be a fresh water rinse. Uh, and I, I'm just making these up as I go. But then let's, let's say the third would be, uh, you know, again, soapy water, fresh water rinse, and, and proper dry. Um, if you get any dirt in it, I, I mean mud, muck, uh, anything like that, sometimes you need to go in there and you need to manipulate it. And I literally, uh, what I've done in the past is I 
soapy water bucket and I take a soft dish cloth or a microfiber cloth and wash it, wash it out. Um, so, and, you know, sometimes you just have to get in there and be careful about any abrasives on the polycarbonate lens. Be really, really careful about scratching your lens. We're more than happy to sell you all the lenses that you scratch up to a point of storage structure field of view or, or your vision uh, but be careful with the polycarbonate lens you don't want to scratch them up but you can wipe it out and so forth drying with paper towels can also frost the lens a little bit be real careful with that a damp microfiber cloth is really good for wiping off the lens um, then let's get into sanitizing now sanitizing uh, this has been i think in some ways we kind of overthink this a little bit there are approved uh, uh solutions for different uh different agencies i have and on the guardian technician page i have it listed but i've got a document uh, a document that i can try to put someplace where it's available for everybody it's an older document i'm trying to find out if there's a update but this is from 2000 uh, so it's 20 years old and it's the u.s navy's uh, recommendations for disinfecting agents and it lists uh four different sol cleaning solutions and it's one sanicide uh sanicide plus Advanced TBE, uh, BioRest, and Confidence Plus. And I believe there's a second uh, formula of Confidence Plus. I think it's Confidence Two. Um, is uh, it has an additional uh, solution, and it's a quaternary ammonium solution. Um, lately, there, you know, again, this is a 20-year-old document. There's, I'm sure, there's something new that's out there. There's, uh, there's a solution that came that's really r risen in popularity, especially with the rebreather community. Number one, it's very cost effective. It's another quat solution. Um, it's not a solution. It actually comes in a, in a tablet and it's called Steramine. And uh, the, uh, Dan apparently has approved that now for, for cleaning of uh, uh, or disinfectant uh, or sanitizing for COVID. Um, the, for the COVID virus or coronavirus. And um, it's, what I like about it, it's, it runs around $10 a bottle, 150 tablets. And one tablet, I, know, I wish I had some here to show you. You can look it up. It's easy enough to find. Uh, one tablet per gallon. And you can, if you want to, if, you, if, if you're paranoid like I am, I'm a little OCD, I'd probably, you can use two tablets for, per, um, uh, per gallon. So that means you can mix up a big five gallon bucket and clean your equipment with you know five or 10 tablets and 150 tablets per $10 bottle, that's economical. I mean, that's as inexpensive as any of the solutions that are out there. And it's really risen in popularity, like I say, with the rebreather community because cleaning your loop requires a fairly large quantity of, you know, of, of solution so that you can clean and soak, uh, rinse and soak your, uh, um, your breathing loop, your counter lungs, your, your hoses, your DSV, and, uh, and your center section is necessary. So uh, cleaning a full face mask shouldn't be much different. And again, a lot of times we overthink this. As long as the, the solution does not uh, eat your stuff. Um, one of the things that we've seen recommendations, and I really, really uh, I recommend not using a 10% chlorine solution or uh, bleach solution. That will damage most of your uh, most of your soft goods. If you if you do your wetsuit in it, your black wetsuit's going to turn brown. The threads are going to be weakened, and it does the exact same thing to your BCD as well. So that's a pretty stout so solution. Uh, you know, a, a ten percent bleach is is pretty strong. There are some things you might, might clean with that, but ceramine and um, uh, and others, a sanicide is something we use in the office. Um, and these are all, you know, a, qu a quaternary solution, um, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, you know, so uh, again, you want to soak it. Follow the instructions on the, on the solutions. Generally, if you're using it as spray, the, the instructions for most of them, and they all, they all vary a little bit, but most of them are saturate for 10 minutes. And that means you're going to take your mask and you're going to spray your mask out. So spray, spritz, 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 spray the mask to saturation where the entire thing on the interior is soaked. As you need to, um, uh, if you need to, you know, respray it so it stays wet. And, uh, you know, so that, uh, again, the, the, the product remains active. As it dries out, it's going to become inactive. So keep it wet, keep it sprayed down as you need.
and that will uh, and then let it let it for ten minutes, saturate for ten minutes, and then give it a fresh water rinse. That's important. You don't want to just you know in these solutions are not hazardous to the to your health. And concentrate they are. Concentrate they are. So be careful with that. Um, the uh, but you know the tablets. You want to wash your hands after using the tablets. Wash your hands off. Uh, anything that the dry powder uh, comes in contact with, you want to follow the instructions. Um, as you see, if you're as you need, you can also uh, if you have you know your requirements for an agency. If they're curious about it, you want to print out the safety data sheets. A quick Google search of, of Steramine. Um, one dash G tablets and it put safety data sheet on it. Um, that's kind of SDS safety data sheet, and you'll be able to come up with that. Um, and uh, and that, that'll give you all the details on it. It'll give you for exposures and personal protection and handling and storage and all that stuff is listed in the safety data sheet. Um, with and now I, I mentioned about different methods, and I talked about this I think previously. That when you're cleaning a mask, you want to. There's different things I've seen. You know, not cleaning a mask or just a freshwater rinse is a very basic, as I mentioned. Uh, there are, and I have seen this from the fireside that there are some wipes, like little handy wipes. And I think I mentioned that last week. Uh, I'm not sure um, that like little handy wipes that you tear open a little packet and you wipe out the inside of the mask. That's I guess that's okay. I don't. It's not what. I would consider a good cleaning. The uh, second one would be the spray and rinse, and that's uh, that certainly is acceptable. The one thing, as I mentioned, um, a, a wipe is better than nothing. A spray is better than a wipe, and a dunk is better than a spray. So a good a good dunk and rinse. Uh, be careful with the microphones. I think I mentioned that in the last one. The microphones. You want to make sure that the the microphones don't saturate it for any longer than ten minutes. You don't want to keep them soaking because the microphones will become saturated and uh, and they'll waterlog basically in the hydrophobic membrane. And then you need to make sure that they air dry. Good fresh rinse and an air dry and the microphones will be fine. Um, Equip whites is what Stephen uh, Rogers is mentioning here. I, I've never used this stuff. But um, uh, yeah, Sean, get with me a little later on. Uh, we I wrote up just a quick thing, but there's documentation out there. And again, I think Dan, uh, 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 Josh Roten was, was, had mentioned that Dan had approved uh, the steramine for cleaning of COVID. So I'm sure there's some doc additional documentation. Documentation for me isn't going to really mean that much other than recommended from the manufacturer. We don't have an independent lab where we're doing, uh, you know, culture studies of these of viruses and uh, bacterium and stuff like that. So uh, you need to look at the available stuff from the manufacturer of the product. Not, not so much of the equipment itself. I can uh, just attest to it and I can give you a, th a, a letter that says, uh, I can write you something up that says it's not uh, going to harm the equipment, at, at least with these and following the instructions properly, it won't harm the equipment. Um, the one thing that, and I, I was uh, working with another a federal agency, we have brief discussions about it. Uh, they came up with a cleaning method. Um, and the one thing that, that they had mentioned in their instructions for uh, sanitizing and the use of the equipment during this time is that equipment not be shared. And they do. I, I don't think they assign, personally assign equipment. Equipment itself, when you go on an operation, the equipment is sanitized. And throughout that operation, that equipment is yours until it's sanitized and then reassigned to somebody else as necessary. Um, Mary posts and signature. Uh, signature SKU will post up there a link to it. Uh, I'm not going to open that up now, but if you could help, tell me what that link says. And uh, if that it, is that mentioned, Steramine so uses Ster U.S. Coast Guard uh, uses Steramine. If anyone's interested, okay. Um, and yeah, so so thanks, Mark, on that. Uh, so that's that's those are some of the basics. Uh, you know, making sure you just don't share the equipment uh, uh, is going to be probably the safest way. Make sure to sanitize it. I'm going to kind of wrap up here because we're right at a half an hour. Um, you know, the we just have to practice a little more safety protocols with this. I'm I'm kind of OCD. I don't like sharing my full face mask or using someone else's full face mask. I see it as personal equipment. I don't like sharing my dry suit. Uh, I will if I need to. 
Um, but you know, it's sort of like personal clothing. Don't, uh, you know, I, I wear my own hat. I don't like wearing somebody else's hat. I'm just OCD. I say it's something I wash my hands way too many times a day, which now I think is, in, uh, is, is shown to be justified. My OCD It's like, yeah, I told you so. Um, but it's, but we do have to just practice. I think a lot of ways we've gone maybe a little overboard with some of this and the damage that's been done to us. I'm not going to get into that, but we do. We do need to jets flying overhead. Tyndall, they're flying out of Tyndall today. Um, so we do need to be careful and make sure that we don't share the joy of any of these illnesses. It's not just COVID. It's it's the common cold and flu bug and, and everything else. And um, you know, so you need to uh, just be careful and be cautious with this. So I want everybody just to to stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Uh, I want to mention just a couple of things. We I did one this week where if you have an organization and you're doing, uh, you're getting together and you're sharing, uh, you're having meetings over Zoom uh, with the Public Safety, Northeast Public Safety Diving Association. I did a meeting with them. I, I specifically went in because now I can see everybody that's on with Zoom. If anybody wants to do that, let me know. I'll schedule a, a, a meeting with you on Zoom or whatever format that we might need to work out. And I can go over the specific problems that you might be having. So I'm going to put that out there for anybody that might be interested in that. Uh, it went over. I think it went over pretty well. You know, I, that's my own uh, assumption. I, I the, Everybody seemed to appreciate it. Um, sort of like these, they seem to have gone over pretty well. So I appreciate everybody joining me in this. Again, there's questions here. I'm going to spend a little bit of time right now going through the questions, and I'll be posting those. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, uh, if you're on my Facebook, send me a friend request at um, uh, John. Just search John Hot on here. So send me a friend request, and uh, and you can always shoot me a note on Messenger. Send me any, whatever you need, and I'll do anything I can to give you guys a hand. I do have some follow ups I need to do on some other things here shortly, and uh, but I will be uh, through and checking the questions here and trying to answer those right away. So I appreciate everybody. everybody attendance here and uh you know thanks for thanks for show up. tell you know tell your friends next week we're going to do the one um next week we're going to talk about accessories for the mask get into light rail systems swivels quick disconnects and stuff like that uh so uh if you have any any questions you know certainly um you post them here i'll answer them uh and I'll, if you have something you want me to address in one of these let me know and i could uh, i could do it as subject matter of a future presentation. So again, everybody stay healthy. And uh, again, thanks again for, for attending. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.